How's it going, guys? Back with another video here. Um, the stuff I'm going to show you I bought over the past week or so. Uh, I think this stuff came from one estate sale. I went to an auction, a uh, one thrift store, and a private uh, pick. Somebody answered one of my Craigslist ads, and I went over to his house and uh, picked up a couple things. Uh, so this is what I ended up getting the past week or so. Ended up getting these at an estate sale. I told you guys in the past over and over again about old snapback hats. I had this uh, corduroy uh, Boston Celtics uh, from the 80s. It is not the uh, sports specialties uh, brand. If it was, uh, looks like they sell for around $200 for that brand. Uh, this is just like an off-brand. It is uh, uh, licensed by the NBA. Uh but still probably a $50 hat or so. And then this is a sports specialties uh, snapback hat, a uh, vintage one from the Seattle Supersonics. So I'm guessing uh, that one should sell for 40 to 50. I paid $30 for all the, the uh, hats at the one estate sale. And then the uh, typical uh, farmer trucker hats. Uh, these are the ones you wanna look for with the patch on them. Uh, these look to be new old stock, like they were never worn. Uh, but as you can see, the inner foam uh, deteriorates on these. So, uh, like I said, I paid uh, $30 for all the hats. I have these listed on eBay right now, this group of hats by itself. I have a, a $95 bid on those with, uh, I think, 20-some watchers. So... Uh, Hopefully these might bring uh, 150 range or so. So these uh, these are the hats you guys want to look for, and preferably the uh, K brand or K products. That's who makes these. So have the hats I paid thirty dollars for. Hopefully, maybe two hundred. 250 if I get top dollar for those. Uh, let's see. I uh, went to an auction. Uh, with uh, COVID, there's uh, not very many in-person auctions around here much anymore. Uh, so when there are in-person auctions, they're uh, pretty crowded and a lot of, a lot of bidders, obviously, and the prices uh, tend to go high. Uh, I bid on probably 10 items, only one, two different uh two different lots. I ended up getting this lot and another lot that had a bunch of uh, quartz fashion type watches. I paid uh, $10 for for each lot. And this is just kind of the overview of this lot. Uh, kind of some uh, vintage antique uh, watch part tools and just parts and pieces. Uh, there's some uh, gold-filled glasses. Again, I paid $10 for the uh, both boxes. Um, but I, the reason I bought them was because of these watches that were inside. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, at the same estate sale where I bought the hats, I got this uh, 1985 Swatch watch. Uh, this was $2 and hoping to get uh, 30 to 40 for that. It is working. Uh, but the two flats of watches I got at uh, the estate uh, the state auction had these watches, which are the best ones. Uh, have a Swiss Army uh, quartz watch, put a battery in, is working. These look to sell for around 30, 40 bucks. Have a Seiko uh, 17 Joule automatic watch. I think this is uh, from the late 70s, has that prism type dial. So that was also in a $10 box. Had this uh, Lucerne, it's a uh, dive type watch. This is the only watch that is not running out of the group. So it does tick for a few seconds and stops. So that was in there. Have a Wittenauer. Uh, this one is running, but unfortunately, you can't set the time. The uh, the crown 
which is not original, uh, pulls out. You can wind it, but you cannot set the uh, time with the hands. So have that. And then have a Doxa. This looks like to be from the, I'm guessing the 40s. And this one is running. See the dial isn't in the best condition. So uh, $20 for both flats. So that's about uh, $4 per watch. Pretty good deal for those. And then uh, one thrift store find. Uh, I was kind of surprised to find this at a thrift store. Usually uh, nowadays they look everything up. They probably thought this was just a modern type toy. But it is a uh, Masters of the Universe uh, man at arms with a vehicle. And it was only uh, $3. So it's probably, uh, I would sell them as a set like this, maybe 30, 40 bucks. He is missing his club. Uh, but he does have his other accessory pieces to him. And then my uh, favorite finds uh, were from a Craigslist uh, callback. Uh, I, I place ads on Craigslist and uh, Facebook advertising that I buy items. And uh, a gentleman contacted me and I uh, met him after work and went through his basement. And he, has some, he also had some uh, 12 cent comic books. I uh, offered to buy those from him, but he wanted to hold on to those for now. So he said he'd call me back uh, later if he decided to sell them. But I ended up getting uh, these four items. I've told you guys uh, before, like in previous videos, about these cameras, these uh, Polaroid instant cameras. The uh, This is the SX70. Uh, I sell these as uh, untested, so... Even untested for parts repair, these sell for between seventy and hundred dollars all day, uh, just for parts and repair. I didn't realize what this car was at first until I got home and took a little closer look at it. I could tell it was vintage, and I, I could tell it was uh, like aluminum, but didn't really pay too much attention to what it actually could be. And when I got home, did some research on it. I did notice these. Here, uh, and I could tell it was definitely old just by the paint on it. And then you see the the regular screws on the bottom; they're not the Phillips screws. So I have this All American Hot Rod, uh, made in California, and this is actually a tether car. <clears throat> so you do uh, back in the day, uh, you'd have these motorized, uh, usually with like an airplane. Cox type engine and you would uh, you know put the this one actually the engine goes in the the back here and you put a string on these and turn on the engine and basically just hold it and it goes around in circles so a uh, really amazing find I've never come across uh, one of these shapes before uh, most of the tether cars you find they're kind of shaped like a uh, like an indie type car, an early indie indie car, or like a, uh, I guess, World of Outlaws, that style of uh, car body. But I've never actually come across uh, one of these before. And then he did have a couple watches. So had this, uh, I'm guessing probably from the 30s maybe. And it's unusual. Uh, usually watches from this era aren't this large. So a little uh, larger size uh, men's watch, uh, unmarked. I pop the back off and the, the movement isn't marked and the inside of the case back is not marked either. So that was included. And then my favorite find was probably this. Have a, a Pierce uh, mono pusher chronograph. It is not running, unfortunately. Uh, it also is missing the pusher there. I've never uh, came across one of these brands. I did some research, and apparently this company uh, produced their own movement. So I guess it is kind of difficult to find uh, parts for these. 
and only a few uh, dealers actually or repair people actually uh, can repair these. So um, I'll probably keep it for a while, but I'll probably end up selling this uh, for parts repair. Uh, I did pop the back off and the movement is very nice, uh, nice and clean. So, and there's also no, no service marks on this, like it was never repaired. And you can just tell by the condition, it probably wasn't worn a whole lot. Uh, Cause a lot of times you see these uh, and the dials are really worn. So those are the pickups the last week. I want to again, uh, thank you guys for watching all of you who, who have uh, subscribed and I'll see you next week.